Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we've got an electrifying tale that has set the global stage abuzz. Brace yourselves for a roller coaster of revelations as we embark on a journey into the heart of China's astonishing $2 trillion mega projects. China is currently on a mega spree, investing trillions in the creation of mind bending structures across Asia and beyond. Picture this. A staggering $100 billion skyscraper, a project so perplexing, it left Aussie scientists scratching their heads. And hold on to your seats, there's an $800 billion new megacity that had American engineers exclaiming, Whoa! But what's the scoop behind these colossal projects? What's propelling China to unleash this torrent of supersized marvels upon the world? Buckle up, because we're about to spill the beans! Join us as we unravel the mystery, exploring when, where, and how China orchestrated these epic ventures. Let's dive into the incredible reality behind China's largest transportation operation for a $100 billion skyscraper. Have you ever witnessed the shipment of one of the most massive and heaviest things in shipping history? Brace yourself for this mind-blowing fact. The world's largest spar platform stands at a towering height of 339 meters and weighs a staggering 70,000 tons. To put that into perspective, think about stacking three statues of liberty on top of each other and you'd get a platform of similar dimensions. Now imagine the monumental task of transporting this behemoth. Only one ship was up to the challenge and it had to travel a mind-boggling distance of 16,600 miles, 26,800 kilometers from its construction site in Korea to Norway. This incredible feat was made possible by the semi-submersible heavy vessel known as the Dockwise Vanguard, owned by Boscalis. This maritime giant stretches about 200 meters in length and over 70 meters in width, with a jaw-dropping carrying capacity of up to 123,000 tons of cargo. But here's the secret sauce. These vessels have a unique feature. Their decks can submerge up to 27 meters underwater, allowing them to dive beneath massive cargo and resurface. This remarkable capability allows them to transport unusually shaped cargo effectively. After nearly two months at sea, cruising at a speed of 24 kilometers per hour, the Dockwise Vanguard reached the Norwegian coast. Here, a precision operation unfolded as it was positioned and filled with 11,000 gallons of water to make way for the spar platform. This transportation operation itself became one for the record books. Get ready to be captivated as we unravel the astonishing tale of China's mind-boggling $100 billion mega project that has left Australian scientists scratching their heads. This is a story that's making waves as China forges ahead with the construction of a massive iron mine in Guinea, an endeavor that could be operational as soon as 2025. China, the world's second largest economy, has a voracious appetite for iron ore, despite its outdated industrial equipment. This led to some heated tensions in its relationship with Australia. In an effort to reduce its dependence on Australian iron ore, China began exploring alternative sources, and that's where the plot thickens. The star of today's show is the Samandu Iron Mine, nestled within the Samandu Mountain Range in southern Guinea. This iron ore deposit is one of the largest on the planet, boasting an estimated reserve of a whopping 2.4 billion metric tons, with an impressive grade of 65% iron. Picture this. The mine is situated about 550 kilometers east of Guinea's capital, Conakry, with two distinct iron deposits, the Samandu North and Samandu South, separated by roughly four kilometers, each spanning up to seven kilometers in length and up to one kilometer in width. Now let's dig into the intriguing connection between China, Australia, and this iron mine. The story takes an unexpected twist when you consider that Australia previously held the mining rights for Samandu. This is where it gets fascinating. China has now secured the mining rights for this colossal endeavor, and it's a game changer. China's audacious move is a significant milestone in the global mining landscape. They've taken the lead in this field, outmaneuvering Australia in a colossal way. To put it bluntly, Australia has lost its grip on the Samandu iron mine. What's even more astonishing is that China is making tremendous strides towards constructing this massive mine in Guinea, with an anticipated operational date of 2025. 
The total worth of this venture surpasses a jaw-dropping $200 billion. Keep in mind that China's economy ranks second globally, which isn't surprising. However, here's the twist. China's industrial technology isn't at the forefront. This is precisely why China consumes so much iron ore, including from Australia. Now let's address the elephant in the room, the Australia-China relationship. To put it mildly, it's been a rocky road recently, with tensions boiling over. China's thirst for iron ore was a significant point of contention. However, in a move that has sent shockwaves across diplomatic circles, China has managed to acquire the mining rights for the Samandu Iron Mine in Guinea, previously held by Australia. The actions of Guinea have caught Australia off guard, and the implications for the Australia-China alliance remain uncertain. But one thing is crystal clear. China is determined to reduce its reliance on Australian resources like iron ore. The Samandu Iron Mine is just one example of China's unwavering commitment to securing its future. So why did Guinea decide to sever ties with Australia and grant China these crucial mining rights to such a colossal iron mine? That's a question with profound consequences, and the answers may reshape global dynamics. Imagine a colossal puzzle of canals, dams, and reservoirs coming together across China. They're not just pieces of infrastructure. They're a key to the country's future. More than a whopping 800 billion yuan is being poured into these projects this year alone. Now, let's talk about the star of the show, the South North Water Transfer Project. Picture a super long tunnel, about 200 kilometers in length, snaking its way from the Yangtze River to a reservoir up north. This reservoir will quench the thirst of northern China. This tunnel is no ordinary one. It's going to be the world's longest, even longer than the one in Finland that holds the current record. Some parts of it will even dive as deep as a kilometer underground. This is all part of China's grand plan to create a mega water supply network. It's like connecting the dots on a massive water map. This network will let the Chinese government move water like never before, making sure everyone has enough. But there's more to it. These projects are also providing a boost to the job market. With around 30,000 water conservation initiatives in action, they're giving work to about 1 million people. So it's not just water flowing here, but also opportunities. In a nutshell, China's crafting a watery masterpiece, a network of waterways and tunnels that'll help keep the whole country hydrated. It's a mix of innovation, ambition, and a lot of hard work coming together for a better tomorrow. Hold on to your hats because we're diving into the incredible world of Chengdu down through International Airport. This aviation marvel is smack dab in the heart of Chengdu, China's capital city. Imagine this. It's like a shiny new gem, the region's second international airport, and it cost a jaw-dropping $10 billion. Talk about putting your money where your runway is. In just six years, this baby went from blueprint to reality, officially opening its doors in June 2021. Now, it's not just a fancy building. It's a crucial route to Western China. And let's talk features. Three runways are like the airport's heartbeat, keeping things moving. And those two terminals? They're shaped like the mythical sunbird. It's like stepping into a legend. With the power to handle up to 60 million travelers and 20,000 tons of cargo every year, this place is like a city in the sky. Hold on to your hat. The airport's got a footprint of 7.6 million square feet, 700,000 square meters. But guess what? They're not stopping here. The goal is to become China's third biggest airport hub. That means more runways, more terminals, more everything. But it's not just about the airport. It's about connections. Picture this. It's hooked up to rail networks, the subway, and even a personal rapid transport system. It's all about making your journey as smooth as possible. And here's the kicker. It's not just a transit spot. This place is buzzing with action. With 1,500 dorms for personnel, a sprawling 30,000-square-foot lounge, and a ton of operations, it's more than an airport. It's a whole ecosystem. So whether you're a traveler or just someone who loves progress, Chengdu down through International Airport is a must-see. It's not just about flying. It's about how China's dedicated to linking people, boosting growth, and rewriting the story of traditional airports.
North China's vast deserts are transforming into something incredible, a massive hub for renewable energy. Think about wind turbines and solar panels stretching across the landscape, harnessing the power of nature. It's like creating super-powered energy bases right in the heart of the desert. The cool part? These energy bases will soon generate as much renewable energy as all of Europe plans to have by 2030. That's a huge leap forward. They're doing this in two phases. The first one, involving around 100 gigatons of turbines and solar panels, should be up and running next year. And get this, the second phase, which is even bigger at 450 gigatons, is kicking off this year. Now, you might wonder about the cost. The second phase will require about 3 trillion yuan, which is a lot, but think of it as an investment in a cleaner future. The electricity generated here won't stay in the desert. It's going to power the bustling cities along the eastern shore. They've got some high-tech plans for this using ultra-high voltage transmission lines that are like energy highways. China's serious about this. Their state-owned grid company is all set to build 13 of these transmission lines this year alone. And guess what? If you add up all the money they're putting into renewable energy and these power lines, it could go beyond 2.6 trillion yuan this year. That's a massive commitment to going green. So, in a nutshell, North China's deserts are turning into renewable energy hotspots that might just outshine Europe's plans. It's like a green energy revolution happening right in front of us. Now, if you've never heard of the largest self-propelled machine in the world, you're in for a treat. Picture an excavator made by the German company Krupp, originally created in 1978. Surprisingly, this colossal excavator is still operational today, making it the world's largest. It's powered by a multitude of electric motors, each packing a punch with power ratings in the tens of megawatts, equivalent to the energy needs of a small city. Whenever this gigantic excavator is moved to a new worksite, it's not just another day in the neighborhood. It garners the attention of curious onlookers, causing a stir wherever it goes. In 2001, this mammoth machine embarked on a 22-kilometer journey, traversing diverse terrain, including farmlands, minor roads, rivers, electricity lines, and even a railroad track. Talk about an engineering marvel. Remember the U.S. Space Shuttle program? It soared into existence in 1982, completing 25 missions over 19 years before being retired in 2011. Its final voyage was a spectacle for Californians, as the space shuttle made a leisurely crawl through the streets of Los Angeles at a snail's pace of two miles per hour. This monumental event involved clearing 400 trees to make way for the shuttle, and it covered a whopping one to two million square meters of city buildings. It was a sight to behold. Now shift your gaze to China, where they've been constructing some jaw-dropping structures, one architectural masterpiece that's taken investors by storm is a cluster of towers that connect at the summit. These horizontal skyscrapers, each soaring to 250 meters in height, feature a glass gallery with breathtaking views. The entire complex stretches around 300 meters and can accommodate approximately 3,000 visitors daily. What's truly mind-boggling is that this heavenly bridge weighs around 40,000 tons, with 12,000 tons of it crafted from glass. The construction process itself involved hoisting a substantial section of the skyscraper to a towering height of 250 meters. It's one of China's most ambitious skyscraper projects in recent memory. Speaking of ambitious, an American by the name of Tim Brown managed to move his colossal historic house a staggering 900 meters, shelling out a cool $400,000 for this remarkable feat. These houses boast an impressive 480 square meters, and are still fit for habitation. To make this happen, Tim even built a high-rise structure next to his old house. His motive? Preserving both the valuable land and the historically significant house. It took Tim and his team a whopping eight years to prepare for this colossal move. Talk about dedication to history. And that's not all. Innovations in heavy transport technology are on the horizon. One groundbreaking development from Mamoet introduces hydraulic trailer-mounted boosters that can drive the six axles of heavy cargo. These boosters pack over 1,000 horsepower and more than 40 tons of tractor force, enabling them to handle high loads and navigate challenging terrain efficiently. They can even be connected to different trailers to transport lengthy loads and navigate sharp 90-degree turns with ease. 
The future of heavy transport looks promising. But what about wind turbines? These colossal structures, often reaching heights of over 90 meters, are a common sight from afar. But how do they get up those hills and mountains? Dependable heavy-duty semi-trailers and retractable trailers come into play. The routes for transporting these gigantic components are meticulously planned, and sometimes road modifications are necessary, including removing trees and debris. Some trailers even feature autonomous control systems, allowing them to follow the truck's path without manual intervention, even on sharp 90-degree bends. Now, when the route gets tricky, with cliffs, steep roads, and hairpin turns, trailers with adapters for wind turbines step in. They boast a 360-degree rotating fan and a hydraulic lifting system that adjusts for the loaded center of gravity and angle of inclination. These adaptations make navigating steep slopes and hairpin turns a breeze. China's hillsides have seen their fair share of these incredible transports. In the city of Aegean in China's Shaanxi province, 20 colossal tumbleweeds were transported during a groundbreaking endeavor. The journey took a mere three hours, but it required meticulous planning and the removal of lampposts in some corners. These massive feats of transportation are a testament to human ingenuity and engineering prowess. So, there you have it. A glimpse into the awe-inspiring world of transporting colossal structures, whether it's skyscrapers, historic houses, or wind turbine components. These remarkable achievements push the boundaries of what's possible and showcase the incredible feats of engineering and innovation that continue to shape our world. China is like a high-speed train champion with a mind-boggling 40,000 kilometers of super-fast tracks. Yep, that's more than double what the whole rest of the world has. And guess what? They're not slowing down. Loads of exciting projects are zooming ahead. Hold on to your seats because the big one is a 1,629-kilometer route from Sichuan to the cool Tibetan capital Lhasa. Picture this. It climbs over mountains, crosses earthquake-prone zones, and even glaciers. It's a true adventure on rails. They're aiming to finish it by 2030, and it's going to cost about 320 billion yuan. But here's the mega plan. China's aiming for a jaw-dropping 70,000 kilometers of high-speed rail by 2035. That's like putting high-speed tracks around the Earth. Almost twice! Now let's talk numbers. Even though they're going big, they're actually slowing down a bit from their previous speed. But hey, they're still zooming forward. And that's not all. China's not just building fast trains, they're also creating outrageously massive projects. Imagine the tallest bridge in the world, the longest underwater tunnel ever, the fastest rail network, and even the biggest observatory. It's like they're collecting world records. But you know what's cool? All these projects aren't just about speed and size. They're boosting China's economy and making their influence felt worldwide. It's like they're building the future, one impressive project at a time. In short, China's the king of high-speed rails, with mind-blowing plans that'll make your head spin. They're setting records and changing the world, all while speeding ahead into the future. Let's discuss some more interesting projects of China. The highest bridge in the world, China, proudly holds the record for the world's highest elevation with a bridge that spans the Yunnan and Goose provinces. Towering above the breathtaking landscape, this engineering marvel stretches across a deep canyon formed by the Bipin River. With its vertigo-inducing height of 1,854 feet, 565 meters, from the deck to the ground below, this bridge stands as the epitome of human ingenuity. The construction, a daunting task that commenced in 2013 and concluded in 2016, required cutting-edge technology and meticulous engineering to ensure stability and safety. The bridge's span of 4, 396 feet and 1,140 meters adds to its impressive stature, triumphing over challenges like heavy winds and earthquakes. Prepare to be amazed as we delve into one of China's most audacious and some might say wackiest construction projects ever. Picture this. China has set its sights on building what could be the world's largest water pipeline, stretching all the way from the pristine Lake Baikal to the heart of China. This mind-boggling endeavor aims to quench the thirst of over 500 million Chinese citizens, but it comes at a staggering cost. 
the potential depletion of the world's cleanest, largest, and deepest lake. Lake Baikal, often referred to as the world's deepest lake, is not just a marvel of nature, but also a sanctuary for a diverse array of unique flora and fauna. However, in recent years, the delicate balance of this ecological treasure has been under threat due to environmental concerns. The audacious plan to tap into Lake Baikal's pristine waters is a collaboration between Moscow and Beijing, though it's met with mixed feelings. Russian authorities are faced with the challenging task of striking the right balance between preserving this natural wonder and meeting China's relentless demand for freshwater. At the heart of this project lies the Simindu Iron Mine, situated within the Simindu Mountain Range in southern Guinea. This colossal iron ore deposit boasts an estimated reserve of a staggering 2.4 billion metric tons with an impressive 65% iron grade. Imagine its vastness, spanning about 7 kilometers in length and 1 kilometer in width. Now, here's where the plot thickens. China has secured the mining rights for this mammoth project, dealing a blow to Australia's iron ore ambitions. But that's not all. China is also making strides toward constructing this immense mine in Guinea, with plans for it to be operational by 2025. The price tag for this endeavor exceeds a jaw-dropping $200 billion. China's industrial technology may be outdated, but its determination knows no bounds. So how does this connect to Lake Baikal? Well, the Russian government aims to tap into Lake Baikal's waters to address the freshwater scarcity plaguing the Gansu province. The plan involves installing a massive water pipeline that will travel through Mongolian territory and cross the Gobi Desert before reaching Gansu's capital, Lanzhou. The project, developed by Chinese experts and scientists, has been integrated into the 2015 agreement between China and Russia. On paper, it appears feasible, given the technical ease of constructing such a pipeline. But this endeavor isn't just about quenching China's thirst. It's also about generating profits. China intends to lead in market relations and export the fresh water, not only to its own citizens, but to other nations as well. The proposed water pipeline would span over 2,000 kilometers, a monumental feat by any measure. To pump water over such a distance, it would require power comparable to a small hydroelectric power plant. The cost of pumping one cubic meter of fresh water would be relatively low, leaving ample room for profit. This is where the project's profitability shines. However, there's an alternative angle to this story. A separate method involves transporting water via special tanks by rail over a distance of approximately 12,000 kilometers. This approach is equally profitable, and China has made preparations for both methods, including building a massive bottling plant near Lake Baikal. But amidst all these ambitious plans, the question lingers. What will happen to Lake Baikal? Can its delicate ecosystem withstand the demands of such a colossal project? The answer remains hypothetical, but it's a topic of concern. China's ambitions to tap into Lake Baikal's waters have raised eyebrows, and the rhetoric from Chinese media appears as a form of propaganda. The Russian government's control over the sale of Lake Baikal's water to China has significant implications— in conclusion, the proposed water pipeline project is a monumental undertaking of unprecedented scale. While it aims to combat drought and freshwater scarcity, the ecological balance of Lake Baikal hangs in the balance. Here's to hoping that the blue eyes of Siberia can be enjoyed by many generations to come, and that this ambitious project will preserve its beauty for years to come.